Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. Happy Monday morning. I'm going to do this a little more informally today. I It's just more comfortable. <laughs> and the air conditioner's blowing on me, and I just let the chickens out, and it's hot and humid, and so... We're going to be informal today. For all of you who watched my first ever blog yesterday, thank you very much. I am deeply appreciative as always. I will link it down below. I am going to talk about the books I read in the blog in a little more depth than I did in the blog itself. And I read other books that are not in the blog. So we'll talk about those as well. Okay, so did I have any DNFs this week? I did. I had, I believe, one, and that would be summer editing. Tammy, I forgot housekeeping. Um, the poll is up on my community tab for the July book club pick, and while I don't. generally read Christmas books in July for Christmas in July. I did choose winter Christmas books for the poll. And as of this filming, it's been up since um, Friday morning. It is still too close to call. Usually by this time of the week, I can make a very good guess as to where the poll is going to end up. And this time I cannot. So your four choices are Ice Swan by Janelle Szyszynski. It would be my first book by her. The second book is The Christmas Dress by Courtney Cole. The third book is A Soul as Cold as Frost by Jennifer Croft. And the fourth choice is a The Cowboy Christmas by Shanna Hatfield. I have not read any of these authors. One of them is Narnia inspired. One of them is inspired by Jeanette over at Jane Reads. One was on a lot of Christmas TBRs last year. And one was sitting on my shelves waiting to be read. I am about to go film a video very much inspired by the poll for July in which I talk about all the books that didn't make it onto the poll. And oh my word, were there a lot of books that didn't make it onto the poll. So if you need something cool to read and it's set in winter or it's set at Christmas because it is hot outside and you need to cool off much like me then that video should be coming out <sighs> I want to say next week we shall see I am suddenly overrun with videos so I will get it out before July I promise and now back to regular scheduled programming. Forever After by Courtney Keisel. This is the first book in the multi-author summer series whose name I cannot remember. They're all available on Kindle Unlimited as they release once every week. Starting with the Courtney Keisel book last week. And, um, I am hopeful that they are not a repeat of the Courtney Keisel book. So, Courtney Keisel book, all the books take place on the same island off of the coast of Florida. They're interconnected, but you can read them as standalones. So I'm not worried that I DNF the very first book in the series. The book opens up and our female protagonist, whose name I have already forgotten, 
is at the senior citizens home and they're talking about what book to read next and this is a very charming chapter it you know you have the spicy senior citizens who want to read a bodice ripper our female character heroine is like uh no uh, it was a very solid opening chapter i laughed i could relate it was a little cringy just like anytime you're you know, parents or people of that, you know, your grandparents' generation are talking about bodice rippers, you're going to cringe. That was all there. It was all appropriate. I was fine. And then chapter two occurs and I tapped out. So our heroine decides that she is going to find romance this summer no matter what. And she is going to employ every dating trope that shows up in a romance, including something I didn't know existed called <gasps> micro tropes. So um, she calls the brother of one of her friends and says, Hey, you want to go meet for dinner? She thinks it's a date. She gets all gussied up. He shows up in his police uniform because he clearly doesn't understand that it's a date. And uh, this is the, it is the cringiest thing I have read in quite some time. It, 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 it is beyond cringe. At one point, she takes a piece of rice from her dinner and puts it in her hair so that he can reach over and gently remove the rice she somehow managed to get stuck in her hair. Of course, he's oblivious to this and doesn't see it. And then she decides, oh, well, that didn't work, so I'm going to try the microtrope of fake choking. And uh, she pretends to be choking. Her quote-unquote date rushes out to his car to get his emergency kit to, you know, help a choking victim. Her brother, her best friend's brother, walks in, who's been off island for a very long time, and goes over to try to perform the Heimlich remover maneuver on her and allow her to breathe. At that point, I, I was just done. It was nonsense. And since when is fake choking a, a, a romance thing? Uh, it was just the absolute cringiest thing I, I can remember reading in quite some time. It is well beyond, excuse me, bird issues. Cheese level of cringe, this was just, uncomfortable and oh it was it was bad it was it was it was it was bad so that is the only book I recall off the top of my head DNFing this week I'm trying to think if there was anything else and there was not so next up I only had one audio listen this week. I didn't get a chance to start the second Emily Dickinson book, but I will start that this week or listen to that this week. I did, however, read a novella and I read it for the vlog um, from the Audible Plus catalog. It was a new to me author and I read the novella out of order and that's okay because they can stand alone. That was Summer Melt by Emily March. This is the third novella in the... Oh, I'll put the series right here. And all three novellas are... Um, holiday related. And this one was summer related. Had, you know, these, as you can see, these beautiful ice cream scoops on the cover. So it was a perfect summer read. It's a, sh you know, it's like two and a half, under three hours on regular speed on Audible. 
I thoroughly loved this one. I, it, I thoroughly love this one. Yes, it's a giant block of cheese. However, that giant block of cheese is filled with humor. It is a 30s, you know, mid 30s relationship. So we're not talking 20 year olds. Yes, it's a little insta lovey, but it's okay that it's insta lovey. In your mid 30s, you pretty much you know who you are and what you want in life. And I think love happens, a deeper love happens faster in as you age than when you're younger and has a better chance of success just because you know who you are as a person. I said that because I knew I was going to marry my husband the first time I saw him. Um, takes place in the Colorado Rockies. It's a small town. It, it's just delightful. So it's delightful. And I will easily pick up the other two novellas at the appropriate seasonal point. I will listen to the, I will read or listen to the, um, her other books they, that take place in the same town. They're, however, full length novels and I am here for it. I, it was what I wanted in a very quick, easy summer listen. Okay, so let's do the fur let's do the vlog books first. Let's I'm sorry, I did have one other DNF this week. It was a vlog book. So I'll just talk about it here. That would be One Big Happy Family by Jamie Day. Um When Real World Politics Enter Fiction, it's an automatic I'm out. And that's what happened. Uh, I was one thirty something, and polit politics entered the picture, and I exited the picture. Um, if you watch the vlog, you know that the writing was not the problem here. She writes very atmospheric settings, and the suspense of the book absolutely draws you in. However, I read fiction to escape. I do not read fiction to be lectured on politics from some random author that I do not know and I have no reason to trust. And shame on St. Martin's Press for allowing that in a book. It's inexcusable, and no one reads fiction for that. If I want to read a political drama, great. I will go search out a political drama, and those political dramas that I read are not about real-world politics. If I want real-world politics, I will go read nonfiction. I was a political science major back in the day. So it's not that I don't like politics, but no, not in my fiction. Just no, not in my fiction. That brings us to the utter gem that is the seven and a half deaths of Evan, Evan, Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is his debut novel. I have his second novel on order. And his third novel was just released. I'm going to wait for it to come out in paperback. So it, in theory, it um, matches the other ones on my shelf. This was fabulous. It is everything. It is talked up into being. It is twisty and turny and unexpected and... It is told from, without giving anything away, I will say that it is told from multiple viewpoints. 
and you need to figure out who murders Evelyn Hardcastle so that you can escape. So it is in one sense very much a locked room mystery. And oh, I got that too sweet. Ooh. I'm probably too far away for you to see this, but on the corners of the book, there are um, little pictures, and every picture is different, and it relates to the story itself, and there are it, on the back as well in the corners. He has three books published. I will read all, all the remaining two and look eagerly forward to the fourth. It is rare, and it is rare that I don't guess the villain and I don't guess the ending. Okay, Pickles is outside. He's happy. It'll be quieter in here. So we're good to go. And so if you're wondering if you should read Martha Keys, based on the one book I've read by her, absolutely. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I laughed. It was relatable. It was entertaining. It was what I needed last night or yesterday when I read it. And that is all I really ever want from a book is escapist fiction with relatable characters and that's what this was so okay and the last thing I read this week was I continued on with The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson it is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series and you probably can't see it but there is a plethora of tags and annotations and I have definitely missed things I missed the first time around. Good morning, Fireball. I found a reference in here over the weekend to a character that is in Elantris. I certainly didn't catch that the first time I read this. Did I read 100 pages, you know, a day this last week? No, I did not. Am I okay with that? Yes, I am. So I am currently on page 337 out of, I think it's just over 1,000. 997? Nope, 1,001. So, yeah, I have 700, a little less than 700 pages to go. That's okay. I will get that done before the end of June. Fireball, no. Yes, I know. You're very unloved, and I never, ever, ever pay attention to you. And, oh, my stars, what are you going to do in life, right? 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 Okay, lay down. So, what do I think I'm going to read this week? The honest answer is, I don't know. Because right now, my reading is all... Impulsive mood reading. It isn't necessarily what I have loaded up on my Kindle or what is on my June pile of possibilities or the books that are in my bookshelf going, hey, you know, remember me? You bought me once long ago and you really wanted to read me then? Read me now. It is whatever my brain says it wants to read. And I am okay with that. I, I, I really am. I have, am I reading as much as I did in May? No. Am I reading a lot in June? Yes. So, what is on the pile? Fireball? No. Fireball? No. Yes, my needy dog. Lay down. Yeah, your eyes are all weepy because of the weather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Allergy dog. Okay, lay down. So, 
potential reads for this week is Summer on Honeysuckle Ridge by Debbie Mason. Softy enough last year. It's only like 380 pages. It's nothing I can't read. I just want to, you know, I just need to be in the mood to sit down and read it. This is went on sale the 4th of June. I should have read it before that. That's Match Me If You Can by Swatty Hedge. This was a Goodreads win giveaway. And my last Goodreads wins giveaway, which was One Big Happy Family, was not successful. This is a romance set in Mumbai. Hello, Felicity. Your turn. And it's just shy of 300 pages, so it's not going to be a huge time commitment. So maybe we'll try that one. And the other possibility um, from the June, I have other June pile possibilities. This one is also short, Frankenstein, the 1818 text by Shelley. I've wanted to read this for a while. It's just a matter of me sitting down and reading it. It's nothing I won't enjoy. It's just, yeah. I probably just need to set aside a day and tackle it. It's not long. It's not like it's gonna be a, you know, slog or anything. Okay, I, I come across a portion in the back entitled, How to Read Frankenstein. Frankenstein is a novel that can be read and analyzed from many points of view. Biographical, formalist, psychoanalytical, feminist, Marxist, deconstructionist, new historical, to name a few. Uh, here I suggest that we are... So, I highly recommend this book. If it's sitting on your shelf and you just haven't made time for it yet, or you run across it at the library... I think somebody said in the vlog comments that it's available on Kindle Unlimited. Run. Don't walk. Pick it up. Take your time. Enjoy this for the incredible debut, no debut novel this is. And the twists and the turns and the wonderfully plotted, intricate mystery novel that this is. It is fantastic. I don't, I don't say this very often, but this is a mystery novel that is unlike anything I've ever read, especially in the mystery genre. And I have read a lot of mysteries in my lifetime. And this one blew me away. So yeah, go read this. All right, next up would be the books I read on my Kindle this week. Um, first, let's talk about Crooked House by Agatha Christie. I actually read this last week, or the week, it should have been in last week's video. However, I forgot to talk about it. I uh, got inspired when it showed up on Amanda's mini book haul from McKay's. And it wasn't familiar. Turns out it was on Kindle Unlimited. I read it. Sure enough, I hadn't read it before. It is a standalone. It is a locked door. And it's an Agatha. What more do you need? Okay, you want a little more? The villain uh, will, if you're not good at guessing mysteries, the villain will surprise you. If you like dysfunctional families, this one is up your alley. If you like a mystery with, you know, twists and turns, but it's still very cozy. This one is up your alley. You know, it's Agatha. 
you cannot go wrong with an Agatha Christie mystery. I don't think I have ever read an Agatha that hasn't just been a satisfying, enjoyable read. And this was no different. She is still, after all these years, just the absolute master of the genre. And it is very, very difficult to top her creative abilities and, and what she has accomplished. It's just, it's very hard. So kudos to Agatha. Okay. And next up on my Kindle was my first ever Martha Keys book. That was Reputation at Risk. This is the first book of the, I want to say Chronicles of Misadventure. If I'm wrong, the title is right here of the series. And this was an absolute delight. I, um, Describe this book as if Emma Keys wrote a Regency romance. Or not Emma Keys. If Emma St. Clair wrote a Regency romance, this is what it would be. It is, it, it was absolutely fabulous. Yeah, well. Okay, I got that way too sweet. So our... A uh, male protagonist comes off in the opening chapters as this insufferable, dark, privileged member of the upper crust and just not somebody you want to tangle with. And our female protagonist comes across as having a giant chip on her shoulder with very little patience for anyone outside of her immediate circle and absolutely no compassion for those she thinks are despicable people abusing their privilege in life and circumstances happen they get thrown together and they end up being engaged it's a fake engagement he claims her as his fiance to save her reputation and after they're caught in a compromising position at a dinner party. And what follows is this delightful read with characters that are going on their own journeys in life and think that they can do it themselves and that the best thing for their families is if they protect their families from the situations involved. And what happens in this sweet, clean Regency rom-com that is not Christian fiction, and there is no mention of faith or God in this book. However, I will tell you that this book is a very heartwarming example of God sending you an angel in disguise to help you through something. In this case, both of our protagonists 
needed help and didn't know how to ask for it and didn't think they were worthy of it. And they got sent each other and they just happened to fall in love and they just happened to be perfect. And they have this humor and sass and banter that will just make you laugh. And they have chemistry off the page. And they reminded me so much of Dave and I, just that back and forth, sarcastic, independent, tug and pull of a relationship. It was, uh, it was just a delightful read. It, it was, it was just a delightful read. I know that Amanda also read it this weekend. She did listen to it. Martha has this um, one up on her YouTube channel, which I will link down below for narration. I read it on Kindle and um, I have it on Amanda's authority that the narration is excellent. Okay, Pickles is outside. He's happy. It'll be quieter in here. So we're good to go. And so, if you're wondering if you should read Martha Keys, based on the one book I've read by her, absolutely. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I laughed. It was relatable. It was entertaining. It was what I needed last night, or yesterday when I read it. And that is all I really ever want from a book is escapist fiction with relatable characters. And that's what this was. So, okay. And the last thing I read this week was I continued on with The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. It is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series. And you probably can't see it, but there is a plethora of tags and annotations, and I have definitely missed things I missed the first time around. Good morning, Fireball. I found a reference in here over the weekend to a character that is in Elantris. I certainly didn't catch that the first time I read this. Did I read 100 pages, you know, a day this last week? No, I did not. Am I okay with that? Yes, I am. So I am currently on page 337 out of, I think it's just over a thousand. 997? Nope, a thousand and one. So yeah, I have 700, a little less than 700 pages to go. That's okay. I will get that done before the end of June. Fireball. No. Yes, I know. You're very unloved, and I never, ever, ever pay attention to you. And, oh, my stars, what are you going to do in life, right? 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 Okay, lay down. So, what do I think I'm going to read this week? The honest answer is, I don't know. Because right now, my reading is all impulsive mood reading. It isn't necessarily what I have loaded up on my Kindle or what is on my June pile of possibilities or the books that are in my bookshelf going, hey, you know, remember me? You bought me once long ago and you really wanted to read me then? Read me now. It is whatever my brain says it wants to read. And I am okay with that. I, I, I really am. I have, am I reading as much as I did in May? No. Am I reading a lot in June? Yes. So, what is on the pile? Fireball? No. Fireball? No. Yes, my needy dog. Lay down. Yeah, your eyes are all weepy because of the weather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Allergy dog. Okay, lay down. So, potentially.
Potential reads for this week is Summer on Honeysuckle Ridge by Debbie Mason. Softy enough last year. It's only it's like 380 pages. It's nothing I can't read. I just want to, you know, I just need to be in the mood to sit down and read it. Whoa. This is went on sale the 4th of June. Should have read it before that. That's Match Me If You Can by Swatty Hedge. This was a Goodreads win giveaway. And my last Goodreads wins giveaway, which was One Big Happy Family, was not successful. This is a romance set in Mumbai. Hello, Felicity. Your turn. And it's just shy of 300 pages, so it's not going to be a huge time commitment. So maybe we'll try that one. And the other possibility um, from the June, I have other June pile possibilities. This one is also short, Frankenstein, the 1818 text by Shelley. I've wanted to read this for a while. It's just a matter of me sitting down and reading it. It's nothing I won't enjoy. Just, yeah. I probably just need to set aside a day and tackle it. It's not long. It's not like it's going to be a, you know, slog or anything. Okay, I, I come across a portion in the back entitled, How to Read Frankenstein. Frankenstein is a novel that can be read and analyzed from many points of view. Biographical, formalist, psychoanalytical, feminist, Marxist, deconstructionist, new historical, to name a few. Uh, here I suggest that we are best served by reading the novel in two ways. As a conflation of three basic Western myths about the dangerous consequences of the pursuit of knowledge and as a doppelganger novel that stresses the interconnections among characters. <sighs> so, this is something that irritates me every time I pick up a classic, and this may be completely unique to me. Don't tell me how to read the book. Just let me read the book. If I need help, I can go search out help. But you don't need to include it in the text. <sighs> the presumption that readers are not smart enough to understand what they are reading every time they pick up a classic and this is a penguin classic, um, is a pet peeve of mine. Most classics are not difficult to understand. Readers go into it with expectations that they are difficult to understand and foreign to their own life experience. That is a load of hogwash. I'm just going to be honest. It's a load of hogwash. People are not so different today than when, let's say, Frankenstein was written or Pride and Pre Prejudice was written. Because as... I can tell you, Reputation at Risk by Martha Keys was giving off great Pride and Prejudice vibes. So a book that was written in the early 1800s and a book that was written in 2024, I believe, 2023, are talking about the same things. Life is not that different than when these books were written. And the fact that classic publishers treat their audience as somehow being 
not intelligent enough to understand what they are reading without their help is a giant pet peeve. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so the other two books that are possible this week, one is on Kindle Unlimited. That is The Crimson Campaign by Brian McClellan. This is book two in the Powder Mage series. It is Flitlock Fantasy. As you know, I absolutely adored the first book. My library does not have a physical copy of it, which would be my preferred method of reading it. So it's on Kindle Unlimited. I'm going to read that one. It may take me the rest of the week to read it here and there and everywhere, but I will read that one this week. I really want to get through that one. And the other one I want to get through this week, and this is a substitute for a 24 and 24 book from Dave, that is The Magic Engineer by Modus D. Jr. This is the third book in the Saga of Recluse series, and it is fantasy, and like all saga books, it can be read as a standalone or in order. So, and I enjoy his books immensely. I, I enjoy his books immensely. It's just over 500 pages and I just need to sit down and read it. Yeah. Okay, so that is all the potentials for this week. Am I promising that any of those are going to show up when we sit down and talk next Monday? No, I am not. I, I understand my brain right now, and my brain right now is still very mood reedy. So, it will be an adventure for both of us. What did you read last week? Is there something out there that I have missed that is just fabulous? If so, leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.